Okay, welcome back. What we're going to be doing is looking at a really cool intervallic pattern, and I'm going to give you some background on what's going on here with the rhythm track and the purpose for it and the theory behind it and all those sorts of things. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a, a rhythm track here, and I'm doing it over E. Okay, so that the whole rhythm track is nothing but an E, and I'll play just a little bit of that here. Okay, so with the rhythm track, what I'm doing is going... Okay, that's all the rhythm track is. And the reason it's like that is because it's just going to be this one chord. I'm not making a chord progression. What I'm going to do is with the, um, the arpeggio, the intervallic movement over the top, I'm actually superimposing chordal ideas over the top of this, which is really what, what I want you to understand is that just because there isn't chordal movement in the rhythm section doesn't mean that you and I can't create chordal movement within the uh, context of our solos. So what I'm using here is I'm starting off using really four different chords. Now I'm in the key of E minor. Okay, and the relative major to E minor, if you know this, the relative major is G major. So I'm using a G major arpeggio, and, and what I'm actually doing is a G major 7, which actually fits in the key of, of G major. So my notes are going to be those. So I've got my G, which is my root, my F sharp, which is the 7th. Okay, and then I come up here my D, that's the 5th. Um, the and then up here, I've got that F sharp again, which is the major seven again. And then what I'm doing is just adding a B. As best I can, I'm adding a B in the fifth fret, or excuse me, fifth string, 14th fret here. Now that one's kind of a bear to catch, but let me show you what the pattern is. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating this intervallic string skipping pattern. Okay, and then I'm going to use that same idea as I descend into these other chords. So, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing uh, 11 to 12, and we'll talk about hammer-ons and pull-offs in just a second, but let me just show you the structure here. So we have 11 and 12, and then I go to 10, back to the 12, to the 14, back to the 12, so I have... So you see how I keep returning to that 12 in between. And then I do another one of those 11 12s. And then what I'm going to do is go over and play 10, 14, back to 10. And I could do that, again, we'll talk about the picking and all that in just a second. So, And then I'm going to do a pull off from 12 to 11. And then head down to that B on the 14th fret of the 5th string. So I have... Now I'm going to give you some suggestions on the way that I pick this, but I really want you to understand that the most important thing is you find what works best for you uh, in the process here. So we do have a tempo that we want to try and achieve. We may not get that fast. We may wind up playing it slower, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But um, I just want to show you, I mean, there's a number of different things going on in this lesson. Obviously, we've got this idea, this theoretical idea of having a kind of a static chord going on in the background or a... a, a singular chordal structure going on and how I'm going to superimpose these chords over the top. But then we've also got another little mini lesson in there, which is a technical lesson of being able to pick all this stuff. And then I guess the third one is the visual idea of being able to play these patterns. Okay? So it, just because it's an E minor doesn't mean that I have to do things that are just E minor, you see? So this G major 7 is going to work really nice over the top of this. Now the way I pick this is I start off with that hammer on, and then I've got a down, up, down, up. So I'm going. So this is always an upstroke, and the ones on this string are downs. Then I'm going to do a hammer on here again. Now right there, what I do is I pick the 10, and I pick the 14, and then I do a pull-off at the end. You would not have to pick all of that if you didn't want to. So it looks like this, nice and slow. And 
and you'll notice I'm going down here and up here. Then I would do a pull off. Then I would play this one. Okay, with a down. Actually, I play with an upstroke. And then this next one here, this is the tough one, is the 14 here, this B. If you can't get this note to work at the faster speeds, you can leave it off and it's not going to affect anything. I just added it in because it's another string skip and it's also part of that chord. It's part of the, the G major chord. So I added it in, but that doesn't mean I hit it every time either. So so I would do that with an upstroke, although you might do it with a down or something like that, or you might just hammer it and it would be fine. So the pattern that I'm doing is going to stay the same. The shape that I'm going to be playing with these other chords is going to have to change a little bit to accommodate the quality of the chord, and you'll see that in just a second. So, I've got my rhythm going underne underneath there, and I've got this. Now what I'm going to do is move down to an F sharp minor chord, but I'm also going to make it F sharp minor 7, okay? So I've got some more notes in there that I can play. So basically what I'm going to do is take that same idea and move down, but now because it's minor and it's a minor 7, I've got to change my, my structure a little bit. So I'm going to be doing the same idea, but I'm going to be going from 9 to 11. So you'll see now I'm going 9 to 11, and then on the top I've got 9 and 12. Now the picking pattern and the movement idea is exactly the same. And then here I'm going to come around. Okay, so with these notes, I'm outlining the F minor 7 chord. Okay. And again, the big thing is, is, is as you practice this slow, you're going to start kind of figuring out what fingering seems like it's best for you. Now, needless to say, with this sort of this sort of idea, if we want to get it to a bit faster speed, we can't do it all down, right? We're going to have to use some alternate picking in there. But one of the biggest, most important things that you have to learn about your playing is what comes out naturally. Um, because, you know, we can think in a, in a logical world, you know, the, the downbeat would be a down strum and then the offbeat would be an up strum and that's the way everything would work. But sometimes you have to try and figure out what kind of, what kind of flows out of you as you play. What feels the best to you? Um, and so what I did on the, on the uh, G major 7 is the same thing I'm going to do on the, on the F sharp minor 7. It's the same idea, okay? So, now does an F sharp minor 7 chord fit in the key of G major? No, you'd get an F sharp diminished chord actually. But I'm not going by logic, I'm going by sound, and I'm going by shape. Because again, this is more of a metal based idea here, and so I don't have to necessarily play by the rules. Always remember that sound trumps theory, okay? quality of whatever it is that you're doing is going to trump logic. It doesn't mean that logic isn't important and we don't use it. I'm using very much elements of logic in here, but in the bigger picture of what I'm actually doing here, I'm trying to just have some fun making up some shapes and having some fun. So I'm not concerned that I'm playing an F sharp minor seven when it should have been like an F sharp diminished chord or something. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm just trying to make something that's kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. Now I'm going to move down a whole step further and do the exact same thing over E minor 7. So now I'm going... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I played that wrong. i got to come down like that. So... Again, I'm playing, and I'll just kind of define this for you, which will be the same as the F sharp minor 7. But here's my root. Here's the E, right? There's my dominant 7th, which is that right there. It's the same note up here. Okay. And then right here, I've got my 5th. And then down here, I've got the 3rd. That's the 3rd of the chord. So I'm playing the root, 3rd, 5th and then whatever seventh is appropriate for what I'm doing. Now again, if you don't know your theory, don't worry about it. Have some fun with the other two things. Have some fun with the, well, the other three things, really, 
with understanding the chord and how we're making something interesting over the top, have fun with the technique of it, the visualization of it, but then just don't worry about the theory so much. And if you are into theory, then then that that you can kind of think about that a little bit as I'm playing this. Now, I didn't have to make these sevens. I could have just had them be triads, uh, just the root, third, and fifth, and it would have been fine too, but um, I'm just trying to make it a little more colorful here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down and I'm going to play a D major seventh, which is going to be the same kind of shape I did up here on G. So I'm going... The only difference, though, is down here, to make things a little more interesting, I'm going to change up the pattern. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is start off the same, but when I go to this note, I'm going to do it as a pull-off and I'm going to change the shape of it. When I say shape, I don't mean what you're looking at, what I'm playing. I'm going to change my pattern, okay? So it changes a little bit at the end just to make it a little more fun. So I'm going... Okay, so we start off the same doing this uh, 6 to 7. But when we get there, we're going to do a pull-off. Go back to that 7, do it again. Pull off to 6. We're going to go to 7 here, which we haven't played that string before uh, in this pattern. Then I'm heading down to the 9, which is the F sharp. Okay, so let me put the whole thing together for you. And then you can decide how, how deep you want to go with this, whether or not it's just a technical exercise, which would be great. A visual exercise, a theoretical exercise, or a composition exercise, right? I mean, putting it against that, that E minor bass, you know, whatever. And again, the rhythm that you make up could be anything. You can use the jam tracks that I've created, uh, but really it could be anything. So we start off going... Then I move down. Then we move down again. Same shape. Then I'm going to move down and do D major 7, but the pattern changes. Okay. Now the nice thing is, is everything is straight eighth notes, so it's just two, 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 two. So what I would suggest for you is you just build up one pattern. It might just be that, and get used to the picking of that—that that hammer on, and then the down, up, down. So you see, I'm doing the down, up, down, up, down, up. And you might just take that and use that as a, as a lick. You might disregard the whole idea of the arpeggio or the string skipping and just make something cool out of this. Which sounds kind of cool too, right? So if we keep going though, then I would add on the second part. And again, however you like to pick it. And if you want to end there, when you first start learning this, it might be a good idea to avoid this fifth string note entirely um, to, to give you a little chance to breathe. If you go... Then you've got time to go... You see, and then you got a little bit of, of, little bit of space. If you add that fifth string note, you're not going to have any space. Okay, that's how this is going to go. So let's try this together. We're going to do the first pattern, we're going to stop, do the second pattern, stop, do the third pattern, and so on. So what I'd like you to do is just, if you need to, stop the video and work on it a little bit, and then come back, and we're going to play it nice and slow, but we're going to play it all the way through each pattern independently, okay? So if you need to work on the G major 7 one, take a, take a break and work on it a little bit, and then come back, and when you're ready, we'll keep going. Okay, so if you're feeling good, let's give this a try, nice and slow. So we're going to go... 
Da 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 da. One, two, ready, go. Now, before you worry about going anywhere, going on to the next one, kind of analyze what you've just done and think about what's hard, right? Is the string skipping hard? Is the hammer-ons or the pull-offs hard? Is it keeping the, the strings quiet as you're playing? Is that what's hard? Do you have too much distortion on your amp so you're getting too much noise? What is it, right? And, and try and kind of isolate that and figure out what you need to do to, to fix that. And then you come back and you try it again. As you continually keep trying to make it better, don't keep making yourself go faster. It's one of the biggest mistakes people make when they learn how to play guitar is that they make a mistake and then they get frustrated and they come back and then they, for some reason, maybe it's just because of the adrenaline, then they play it faster and faster. Well, that doesn't make it any easier and it certainly doesn't keep it clean, right? The goal is to play it slow as many times as you need to until your brain starts understanding the pattern, okay? So to get a bit cosmic on you, and then we'll move on to the next pattern, the next shape here. This thing consists of, depending on how you want to look at it, it consists of one large pattern, which is all of these different chordal shapes that I'm doing, these arpeggios. Break it down further, there's a pattern for each chord. There's a pattern for this chord, a pattern for this chord, a pattern for this chord, and a pattern for this chord. Break it down, and of course there's similarities and differences between some of those patterns whether they're shapes or whether it's the way you're playing it. One, two, and three are all the same. It's the fourth one that's different. But shape-wise, one and four are the same, and two and three are the same, right? Pattern-wise, one, two, and three are the same, four is different. Shape-wise, one and four are the same, two and three are different, right? But if you go even deeper, which I certainly would, would advise you to do so, there's patterns with e each one of those, right? So when you play this thing, uh, sorry, in my mind, that would be the first thing to practice. And then would be the second thing to practice. Now, you can break it up even further than that, but in my mind, that pattern consists of two smaller patterns. This thing, which I got to get used to. There's no reason to worry about, worry about the second part until I can actually do the first part. So the question always comes up, well, should I work the first part of this up then until it's really fast and then start working the second part up? Or should I work the first part up until it, it's comfortable at a slow speed and then work the second part up at a slow speed and then connect them and start raising the speed together? And the answer is, I don't know. It depends on how your brain works. But be aware that they're two very different ways of practicing, right? If you practice this uh, and you get that really fast, but this thing is really slow, they're still never going to come together. Okay, so for me, it's always made more sense to keep everything balanced. I'll practice the first segment of this pattern to get it comfortable, and then I'll practice the second segment of this pattern to get that comfortable. And if you've ever seen any of my stuff before, you know I always talk about connectors. Once we've learned to play these two pieces, we, the most important thing is we still got to try and connect them because independently they're no good. We've got to be able to put them together. So the first part of this has to connect to, which has to connect to, and that's again why you might leave out that fifth string note to make the connector between the movements between the chords a little bit easier. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. But don't kid yourself that learning how to play this sort of thing isn't psychological. It's all psychological. I mean, it is physical too, but you've got to really break down what's the best path that my brain takes to get me from point A to point B. The worst possible thing you can do is practice this whole thing really slow over and over and over because it's going to take you forever. Okay, get to know this shape. Get to know this first pattern, this G major 7 pattern, because once you've got it, the D major 7 is the same thing. Now, the shape, I should say. The way we play it is different though, right? So that kind of sucks because once we get to this one, we're going to have to learn how to do something a little different. Once we get to the middle two guys, the two minor seventh chords that are in the middle, those are really mirrors of each other. They do the exact same thing. So once we learn to do one of them, we do the other one. You see in kind of the benefit there? So there's overlay. Once you learn how to do something on one, it benefits the other ones. Okay? So if you get good at... It's going to benefit... Which is going to benefit which is going to benefit.
but that one changes but the idea is still in there that it's just the the pattern changes a little bit but the string skipping element is there that's why i always like to break things down into smaller pieces in my mind and then build it back up so once i've got and i'm concentrating on keeping everybody quiet and keeping my fingers loose Okay, there it is. Now I can do or don't play this note. It's entirely up to you, but then I got to move over. But the good news is I can see it. And the movement is the same. The fingering's a little different, but the movement's the same. Then I move down. Then I get to this bad boy, which is a little bit different, okay? So now to finish this up, at the very, very end, when I'm on this chord, after I've done this thing, I think I do it three times total. So once I come off this... I have to end this thing, okay? Because it's coming to the end of the, the song, so to speak, or the backing track. So what I do is I just make a little bit of different pattern out of this. Um, so what I went, was I started off the same. But here I went, then back, and then walked down. Okay, now you'll notice I'm right there, I'm playing. Okay, now in logic, I should be using this note because I'm in a minor key. Okay, but I went to this note which is actually a major note. Now, that makes no sense whatsoever. But again, in context of playing this pattern, it sounds kind of cool. So my point is, is don't get into this mentality where you, when you're, when you're trying to create ideas with your solos or with your songwriting, that once you've established yourself as being in a key or you've established yourself as using a particular scale, that you can't do anything else. Like, that's it. That's the only thing you can do. And you can never deviate from that because the gods of music will come and you know, strike you down with a lightning bolt. It doesn't work that way. You gotta, you gotta learn to get a bit more creative, which makes things sound more interesting. Otherwise, we're stuck playing nothing but normalcy all the time. And if that was the case, we'd, we'd lose out on all the really cool stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. I mean, there's just all kinds of different levels in this lesson that you can explore. You don't have to explore them all, but hopefully I did a good enough job of, of kind of enlightening you on all the different things that you could be looking at. So if you're looking at it as just a technical exercise, God bless you, have some fun with it. If you're trying to see it as a compositional idea, then explore it that way, you know, or maybe you're looking at it on a more personal level, trying to figure out what, what, how do you pick this, right? <laughs> And what could you do with this if you wanted to change this into something of your own? You know, into whatever it is that you'd like. It'd be kind of cool. So take care. Practice hard. Good luck with this. This one's kind of a bear, depending on what it is that you want to do with it. And, uh, and let me know if you have any questions about anything. And certainly always remember, you can head over to the Facebook um, uh, Guitar Zoom community page and chat about these things. Maybe post yourself trying to play one of these things or talking about it a little bit, strike up some conversation. So take care, stay positive, and I'll speak to you.